Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the Zero K Two V Two Anniversary Tournament. We are into the winners' semifinals, or at least one of them. We aren't gonna be able to do the Endgame boss versus Gregory Buzzy Beetle, but whoever won that, I think it's done by now. We'll be getting that afterwards. But we will be going against. We'll be watching Norchland G and Rar go against Legmustine. And at the same time, we also, at the bottom, the lower bracket, Cat Lady and Green Squig have won against BM and going up against FSP, which has been kind of reformed since there's been some roster changes as a result of people getting in there. So I think it's Etem Lol instead of Big Bad Mechs. But that is that for that. Matters, of course, is the actual match. Because the actual match is where things are going to get interesting. And And we have we have North Shalangi and Rar against Langustine on Bandit Plains. So Bandit Plains, you already saw it earlier in this tournament. A map that's I mean it's Trojan Hills, just bigger. Oh, why is this so slow? Sorry, I'm Not sure why this is running as slow as it is. Give me a sec. I need to check something. It is running at the right resolution, right? Sorry, sometimes this can be this has been slow in the past because of issues with resolution. No, that's correct. Ah, seriously? All right, well, I apologize for the frame rate in advance. I'm not sure why it's as slow as it is. I feel like something else is getting in the way, and I don't think it's OPS. Ah, <sighs> that's unfortunate. Anyway. So it looks like we are going to be having, let's see, shield and jump bot. What do they have against? Shield and Jump Bot for Lagostine and Spider and Shield Bot for NCG and RAR. I'm not sure. Okay, so no real hyper aggressive options. No gunships, unlike last time, which is good, I suppose. And the gunships last time were a little bit awkward to just suddenly have. I mean,. We come in here and just blast wings, blast wings all day, all day, every day. Nothing but blast wings. Don't know that right now. But we are going to be getting probably a bit more of an econ focus game. We've already seen that North Chile and GNR do not enjoy playing the econ game. They'd rather play the fast game. They'd rather push hard and win that way. So, given that, I'm not sure what Langustine is going to do. I mean, JXG, they seem to know what they're doing as far as the overall economy model of the game and how to actually play that. So I do expect they're going to be pushing in pretty economically. They're going to be expanding quite a lot, trying to take a fair bit of the map. Not sure about Nuzzy, but Nuzzy is already going for the expansion, so I like that. But, of course, Northland, G, and Rar, they are still playing a large map. They have to play the map because that's kind of what you got to do. You got to play the map. And that does seem to be what they're doing. So, that's good. I mean, it's definitely a good way to go about it. I'm just curious what is going to happen there, because I don't expect that it's going to be all that all that micro-focused, all that commander-focused. I mean, like I said, Rarb sure would love to have a commander-focused, but I don't really expect that'll be the case. So, considering that, I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but I feel like it's possibly not going to be great. Although, at the same time, there's already some harassment coming in here for North Chilean G. Or, sorry, for RAR. For SG RAR. They are getting rid of Metal Extractor here and there, but it's not going to be enough. I mean, Bandit Plains is the kind of map where your opponents are getting rid of one of them, but that's fine. You can get rid of the rest of it. And it looks like JXG and Nuzzy are gonna possibly push for naked expansion realizing their opponents like you see in the chat their opponents are not going that quickly in their expansion <laughs> excuse me not going that quickly in their expansion attempts so jxg and nuzzy could theoretically out expand them but probably can't raid 
Because that's the thing, with the slower expansion, it's a bit easier to go in and wipe out everything. Sorry, go in and build up, not wipe out everything. It's harder to go in and wipe out everything, that's the problem. Wiping out everything is an issue. An issue that needs to be solved by not trying to go for it. Although, admittedly, we are seeing JXD go for some pretty decent bandit micro. So actually might be okay. And... Okay. The... Sorry, the... Ah, why can't I think? Hang on. Let's get back into this. North Chilean G. And RAR. Pushing everything back. Neither player got in the center yet. It's been three minutes into the game. I mean, Bandit Plains... Kind of a map that... You could really do that in. I'm a little surprised we aren't seeing as much expansion in there. But both Lagostine and NCG RAR going in as slowly as possible. So it could very well be a pretty... Pretty drawn out match considering the way that things have been going so far. I mean... NCG and RAR starting to fall behind when it comes to the economy. Langustine, I mean, they're pushing, but they aren't really pushing that hard. They're sort of gradually setting up, getting lotuses, long metal extractors. Not a bad idea, but, I mean, it's got some limitations, and it's more a matter of can they turn it into production, because, again, a common problem, as we are seeing right now as well, is having enough production capacity to actually do this. Now, we do have a bunch of of convicts here. They could start building up, I mean, one of them is building up a caretaker. Could build a couple of these, actually. Get some caretakers that have used that to help use all the economy that's there. I mean, really kind of surprised we aren't seeing even just one of the convicts just turn back and assist the factory. I mean, sure, okay, build metal extractors is not a bad idea, but someone needs to go assist that factory. It's not going to be enough just to have the caretaker. Not going to happen quickly enough. So, why are we not seeing that? That, that? I don't know. I'm getting too critical. Darn it. Sorry. I'm getting way too critical. I really shouldn't be this critical. It's just... It is... We are going to be seeing Langustine have some issues with metal stalling quite soon. While North Chilean G and RAR, they are getting... They have you know, 30 metal per second going into one of the factories. Another 20 going into the other. Or 17. So, North Chilean G and RAR are going to be fine as far as production goes. Whereas Langustine, despite their economic advantage, they are going to gradually, or rather quickly, actually falling behind. While at the same time, North Chilean G coming in here with a thug wall rogue ball pushing back all of these convicts that are coming up from JXG. While JXG does continue to expand, the point is North Chilean G and RAR have a much better production base and are using the money they have, or using the metal they have, far more effectively than their opponents are. So, that's the thing I'm really concerned about right now is that JXG. They aren't actually using... Or Langustine is the team. They haven't been using their metal. They're starting to, though. The commander coming in here helping out with... I'm not sure why this is not building, but whatever. Commander is coming in helping out at least a little bit with the jump bot factory. Getting the firewalker up. And finally, some caretakers have gotten up. So, Langustine starting to use 50 metal per second. But even then, it's somewhat on the slow side. They can still push even more production if they actually want to make that economy work for them. But now, let's say they actually are... At the same time, RAR building up a bunch of metal extractors, more so just setting up a firebase with the commander, because of course that is how RAR always plays. Push in with the commander no matter what. And in this case, it's pushing with the commander along an expansion route, which isn't bad, but it's still not really the best option. So the commander expansion route, like, it's, if that gets stopped, it's going to be probably over for North Chilean G and RAR. They haven't got a huge amount of options that don't involve that one commander from RAR, and I don't know how it's going to last, but at the same time, JXG is losing a frontline expansion, or getting a lot of damage to a frontline expansion, while also having their backline cracked wide open. One Lotus is not going to be enough to defend against this force. So, that's four metal extractors that Langustine is going to lose. And putting that puts North Chilean G and RAR quite a bit ahead when it comes to their actual economic production. Now, Langustine, they do have quite a bit in storage, so it's possible for them to hold on as this, as this harassment is happening without too much change in production. But that's alongside RAR's commander coming inside of the base and actually starting to really wreak havoc. So I'm not sure how much of an effect that's going to have or how positive effect it's going to have. I expect it's not going to be very. I expect this is actually going to be a fairly large issue for Langustine. I mean, they can only do so much to help deal with this and... At least they're able to start pushing back some of the forces harassing. Not losing the Southeast Expansion. 
maintaining the metal advantage they have and actually turning that into more production too but a fair bit was lost in the meantime regardless at the same time there is still Rar's commander doing a lot of damage to help get rid of most of everything that's being built up but i would say overall it's not too uneven i mean the main thing right now is that north team they are winning on attrition and actually while they're winning on attrition the commander is heavily damaged the placeholders Placeholders are still up. Moderators are still up. Moderators are still causing problems. That commander is in a terrible position right now. I, I get why Rara is doing what they're doing, but I almost feel like Langostein was seeing it coming and decided, you know, we're just going to go for it. Yeah, sure, whatever. You want to go for... Go send your commander in, have them die? Fine. Well, we'll let your commander die. We'll, we'll oblige you. And it seems to be entirely the way Langostein is playing right now because Langostein... Yeah, I have to worry a little bit about the front lines. They are losing a bit here and there. Actually, oh, JXT did lose their commander. But at the same time, that's... It may not be enough. I mean, Rara's forced back. That's still a huge blow. However, North Shalangi was expanding in the meantime, and I like that. North Shalangi has been taking the center this entire time, which still opens things up. Rar also breaking through Nuzzy. JXT losing all the front line. It's like... Langostein had map control fairly effectively, but they are gradually losing it in various places all at once. I feel like one good solid push in the right spot is going to bowl them over. But at the same time, Langostein is still actually in an all right-ish position. This is going to be a long game. It's going to be another five minutes at least. But it might still be enough. I mean, North Chilean G and RAR, they are pushing in. They are doing their damage. They have taken most of the map. If JXG loses the frontal expansion, it could be enough. And the thing is, they don't have a commander to protect it, so it's not super difficult to take it out without it being rebuilt. And the main issue right now is just getting in through the Langostine, through Nuzzy in particular. And we are seeing an air switch coming up from North Shalane G, which very well could get rid of Nuzzy's entire base, just wipe out everything they built up. And if that happens, then yeah, we could be seeing the end of this quite quickly. I don't know how quickly, though. I mean, it's, it could happen. Could happen now. Could happen a bit later. I mean, could be Nuzzy breaking through all this stuff with the Jack. Actually able to deal some damage, but it's not going to be enough. This Jack won't be able to do much more. Oh, one more shot. One more shot from the Recluse should do the trick. And nope, that Jack's just getting away. Okay, never mind. Jack is fine. Apparently. Of course, the question at this point is just what exactly is the Jack going to do? And it may not matter. As we already have JXG coming in here with a bunch of bandits, that actually is able to get rid of a bunch of the center expansion. JXG is looking to retake that center expansion, as, or just take the center expansion as well, right out from under North Chilean G. But of course, there's still the Air Factory. There's still the possibility of Thunderbirds, or a possibility of Phoenixes, or whatever else that would come in and start, or Ravens, really, just to bomb out some of these key specific units really break and really break Nuzzy's whole line. That would make J that would make Langostine's life considerably more difficult overall. Of course, that depends on whether or not Rar is actually able to do some damage. North Chilean G is able to do some damage, because right now North Chilean G is the only one that's been really pushing the economics, and that hasn't really panned out considering that now Langostine's Wiped out the little economic side. Rar is trying to hold on to break the center, but still, Legacy and North Slane G slash Rar are even in terms of in terms of income, in terms of attrition. North Slane G and Rar are definitely getting ahead, and I think the shield ball that proves it. The shield ball not going to be forced to retreat again as the shields have been wiped out. It needs to fall back, needs to recharge. I mean, two felons, four thugs, handful of convicts. Or not even, no, no convicts, actually. Just the felons and thugs. Not a whole lot of things to build up. Oh, no, there are convicts. My bad. Yeah, not a whole lot of things to build up. But hey, there is the phoenix. That's exactly what I was thinking about. When are they going to put a phoenix in? When are they going to do something with the air factory? And that is exactly what's happening. Get that phoenix down. Well, try to get the phoenix down. Is that one of the moderators on fire? But then the place will just destroys everything. So, yeah, sure, why not? At the same time, this shield ball force coming in here still has a lot of shields up, but it's not going to do the trick. And 
really, Racketeers getting into the Gauss more than enough to wipe it out. So this entire front line from Nor from JXG just falling apart. All of the convicts getting set on fire. None of them will die, but hey, getting set on fire isn't bad. It's just a matter of whether or not these... Well, okay, not even whether or not these will be enough. These Phoenixes are actually doing a fine job just weakening the front lines. The shield ball coming in from, from North Chilean G is really doing most of the work. So honestly, right now, it's just a matter of whether or not the shield ball is able to actually get in, finish the job. But I don't think that's going to be a problem. I mean, the shield ball is doing plenty of damage. Able to get rid of a lot of the stuff that's been built up. It's just slowly throwing JXG back into their main base. While at the same time, getting that expansion. There's the second pass of the assault we saw earlier in the game. Trying its best to get in, tear apart this expansion. That should completely break JXG's resolve. We have the front line as well, just to add a little bit more damage. But it's really not much. And it attempts... Some attempts have been made to go around the back by Nuzzy being completely shut down. At the same time, the commander coming in over the western side of the map not really being threatened either. So overall, this is just falling apart for Langustine. They had a reasonably okay start, but North Chilean G and Mar were ultimately able to get in there and ultimately able to tear them apart. Like, it's just only so much you can do when your opponents are able to hold on as long as they are take one side of the map, not really lose it at all. It was a slow expansion, sure. But it was a slow, effective expansion with really well-picked fights. I mean, just look at the attrition count. Like, the attrition count is the real storyteller here. 24,000 metal to 11,000 metal in favor of North, North Chilean Gene Rar. That was the biggest thing. Langustine had a massive economic advantage early on in the game, and that just did the trick. And JXG pushed a little bit too far forward too fast. And ultimately losing their commander means, of course, they can't really defend the rest of the stuff. They can't really build it up. They can't keep that expansion going as it gets damaged. And that's really what what forces this position. What makes it so awkward right now coming in for North Chilean, sorry, for Langustine. Because they had a strong position going in. It's not like they were in a bad spot. They just weren't in, like, the best of spots. It's not a bad spot. But now it's a terrible spot. Now is a spot where there's I just don't see where they can go over this. JXG, their base is basically as as they say, they're dead. And they're not wrong. Tank Factory was being built up. No obvious build queue for it, so I'm not sure what was planned out of that. But it's not gonna be able to do it. JXG wants to resign. I think Nuzzy's gonna hold on a little bit longer. But not even sure about that. Yeah, it looks like it's I mean, JXG is definitely gonna. JXG is definitely done. Their base is gone. Nuzzy might be able to hold on a little bit longer. I mean, they've been able to do fairly well holding off Rar's commander, and that was a huge amount of. A huge amount of time. That, that helped. But it looks like this is. No, Nuzzy. Nuzzy is determined. They don't want to lose yet. I mean, they have a scuttle. They could take out the commander. They're waiting for Rar's commander to come in to take. I mean, it's not ever gonna happen. I mean, it's worth noting that Lagosine sells a comm, North Chilean G and RAR have four times the economy. So, I mean, you could try with a commander? Like, that's... It's an option. It exists. It's not like Nuzzy doesn't have anything to fight with. It's just... I don't think it's a particularly likely option. Like, you know, you could try. Go for it. See what happens. And the Stinger... Oh, it's not well protected enough, actually. Jack could be able to get rid of it. Cool. Still, though, that commander for Nuzzy getting hit by the Wyvern. And, yeah, one more one more stiff gust of wind. That's it. Yeah, the Venom takes it out. Doesn't even need the Stinger for it. That Venom should be able to wipe out the commander. There it goes. Commander's down. That, I think, is where Nuzzy decides it is over. Move on to game two. See if you can do something there to actually save the day. Because it's not going to be enough to do in game one. That's not happening. Bandit Plains does go over to NCG RAR. And that's... That's how it goes. I mean, Scuttle... Scuttle is even trying its best, but there's no energy to keep it cloaked on Langustine's side. How many energies are trying to take? Well, more than they have, that's for sure. And, yeah, not even managing to get a hit in, unfortunately. That is... Kind of sad. That is kind of it. JXG... The only one left in the game, I mean... Nuzzy resigned. JXG throws in the towel. That is going to be game. 
North team wins, but hey, it was close, at least in terms of metal use. Just army value wasn't. It was the attrition. North just picked fights a lot more intelligently, and as a result, kept their units alive. And then was able to turn that into expansions. And then was able to turn that into a win. Because that's how it goes. So, that was that. And it's also worth noting the other... The other winners bracket semifinals, 2-0 in favor of Endgame Boss. Not entirely surprising. That is Men in 12 and Sparkles. So, yeah, well, yep, makes sense. But that's not what we're watching right now. What we're watching right now, of course, is Game 2, or will be soon Game 2, of North Clan G RAR versus the other people. Oh, I have no idea what this is. So, sorry. Yeah, North Slane Jane Rar versus Langustine. That is... And we're still dealing with that. We're still doing that. But it's going to be on a different map. But I'm not sure what map it's going to be. Like, considering how things went, I feel like it's going to be probably... I mean, it's got to be one of the smaller maps. It's just one of those things where it's clear that if anything goes on for any long period of time, it's going to go in favor of the team with more going for them. Like, the more... I mean, okay, to be fair, it's not an uneven match, but, like, JXG was doing a lot of reclaim and expansion. Such. Nuzzy wasn't really... So I feel like a smaller map to at least let them come together, because Nuzzy's definitely more focused on the micro, JXG's way more focused on the macro. I think that would work. I think it worked reasonably well as a way of getting that all set up. But otherwise, I, I'm not very confident that there's really a way of making that all work. Oh! Okay, Rogue's River! Wow! Alright, that is possibly still useful. Maybe. Like, I could see it maybe working, especially since there aren't a whole lot of metal extractors. But that's more a question of whether or not Jake and Nuzzy can work together. But again, being as large of a map as it is, I don't think Rogue's River will work out. We, okay, so we have Rogue's River. That is our pick. Ah. Kind of wish they would actually do him. But. Oh, yeah, so I should point out the rest of the bracket. The that Fat Man, Little Boy, and Throwing the Towel Bottom have both won their matches and are now up against each other. I'm guessing Throwing the Towel is probably going to take that since it's the option Vampire Duck and Emlyn. Yeah, Throwing the Towel Bottom Corner is probably going to win that and go up against Open Dime Time Friend. Going against Gregory Buzzy Beetle. Actually, that might be, yeah, I don't know. I mean, whoever wins that, I guess it'd be more of a worthy match. Sorry, there's some, some chat stuff about me missing the only good match. I was like, I don't have much control over this. But I just I just play whatever, I just watch whatever is available when I finally get the chance to actually get to it. And sometimes that's not it can't easily be the best match of all the time. It's an elimination tournament. You can't always tell who's going to be who's going to be where. But hey, that's what the finals are for. 
that's once everything's sorted out and the best players are up against the best players then you get the finals like lower bracket finals and grand finals typically have the best players going up against each other and that's where you're gonna find the really good matches winners finals maybe but depends on how the bracket was seated lower bracket finals almost always because at that point it's worked through and then grand finals yeah absolutely or, I mean, no, lower bracket's historically been the most competitive, I'd say. Grand Finals has often been a situation where, like, the best team is gone, because, at least in 0k, what often happens is that the... the best team... Okay, we're doing Avalanche, I guess? But yeah, what often happens is the best team is way, way better than the other teams. So, that, like, so we get the lower bracket finals, it's like the most competitive match. You get the upper bracket finals, it's possibly a bit one-sided in the grand finals, and again, it can be one-sided. Oh, never mind. I don't know what's going on. This is so confusing. Oh, because I think they're in loser's bracket. That's why. <sighs> okay, sorry about this. There's some confusion about the way the maps work. There's a map pool that it can be picked from that's separated into different groups based on which stage of the tournament we're at. And at this stage in the tournament, it's... You know, winner's bracket that isn't the winner's finals, grand finals. Or as Challenge calls it, semifinals and finals, because Challenge doesn't know how to do double elimination bracket. And, wow, I am really salty today. <laughs> but, I mean, I've, I've said this before. Challenge's approach to double elimination doesn't make sense. Like, it's single elimination bracket names, not double elim names. Okay, but we are going with the Avalanche regardless, so yeah. We're going to be going to Avalanche. All right, then. That's cool. Bit of a smaller map. This is kind of what I expect JXG and Nuzzy would work a bit better on. Although, to be fair, I also expect North Chilean G and VAR to work really well on a map like this just because they can just push their commander down the center. Like, that's the exact thing they've been doing really well this entire time. I mean, this entire time they've been doing this well. Seriously. Ah, I gotta figure out my frame rate. Sorry, I apologize for anyone, especially watching on YouTube, that my frame rate's so bad. I have no idea why. Like, I legitimately don't have a clue. I'm... Whoa, okay, I think I might have figured it out, actually. I was a tab in my web browser that was slowing everything down. Holy crap. Nope, that wasn't it. <sighs> Terribly sorry. I don't usually get these problems. What the heck? Man, this is kind of a problem I had when I first tried to use OBS at 0k and didn't like it. I thought I fixed that. Ah, do some testing. <sighs> really sorry about that. But yeah, we're going to be moving on to... It's just, it's just that I have this. Nope. Yeah, whole computer slow. Well. Ah, sorry, I'm... Yeah, this is annoying. Well, anyway. I'm gonna try to figure that out during the next break, see if I can figure out what the heck's going on with my frame rate. Like, after... Assuming if... After this set of matches... Okay, what the heck? Oh.
And we are getting ready to go, so let's just get going, and I can stop trying to... Oh, wait, do we have... Where an avalanche? What the hell? Alright, so we're starting out. We have... Agustin setting up Jump Bot and Spider Bot Factory, while NCG and RAR go for Spider Cloaky. And again, RAR with a Striker Commander. Not sure what they're planning on doing, ch chat. Yeah, doesn't look like they have any huge plans. Possibly going for Reavers. Oh yeah, definitely going for Reavers, actually. There it is. Reavers right there. So yeah, likely Reaver Rush from RAR, like Reaver Commander Rush. Not something we see a huge amount, but hey, it works. Might as well go for it, see what happens. But I'm curious, because, I mean, the Reaver is... I mean, it's there. It does a lot of good stuff. Just not really sure how much it's going to be able to do here. Just because it is still... It is still kind of a game with... It's still two players you're fighting against, not just one. Like, Reaver, even against one player, is difficult to make work. Against two players, I'm actually kind of doubtful. Like, that's a lot of effort to make work. I... I don't know. Call me skeptical, but getting through two players' worth of units when you only have the one Reaver, unless they go full-on Riot, and I don't think so. I mean, Spider Jump Bot, not really full of units that are full- uh, Riot, full-on Raider. Not really full of units that are strong Raiders. Not something you just push in and a Reaver would get rid of. Like, Spiders, you're going to be going like Venom Redback or Recluse, and those just deal with Reavers. Jump Bot, you're going to go for Pyro, which, I mean, that Reaver's- have a bit of a timing as Pyros. Like, they can do some stuff, but it's not that uneven of a matchup. And Puppies, you're not going to be dealing... Mean, you can deal with them with Reavers, but that's not what you're going to use if your opponent is going for Reavers, and you're not going to go for that by default. Still, though, good harassment coming in here from North Chilean G. Getting rid of a couple of Metal Extractors off Langustine. Putting them at a slight economic disadvantage, which is good. Actually, three Metal Extractors? Is it going to be three? You mean attempt at three. Some good microphone from North Chilean G to avoid getting hit by the by the slow beam off the conjurer the conjurer the constable what am i saying and that's three metal extractors in total so that's six metal per second that was reduced from langustine for about 20 seconds so nicely done though at the same time north chilean g dealing with stuff but a hey, venom on the pyro good going there that was close could have been pretty bad was not so bad good job same time, though, there are a lot of Reavers around the map, including one down here to try to get rid of the Commander. I mean, this isn't going to work. The Commander is going to be able to finish this off, but still, two-thirds damage, and two more Reavers are coming in to fight the Commander. Those will be more effective. The Commander has already jumped, although it will have refreshed the jump by the, time the, by the time the Reavers get there. But that is still a thing to worry about. Reavers coming in here. There is one Flea as well, just to scout out what's going on. Just to make sure that North Slang and Roar know exactly what's happening. Have full vision coming in. That commander is still heavily damaged. Even one Reaver at a time won't be able to do it. Although the commander, nice jump there. That is exactly what we needed to do. But the thing is, the Reavers still kind of did their job. And they can still get rid of these metal extractors without any resistance. Stop the commander from expanding down there. And open things up for North Chilean and Roar to continue their expansions over to the center. So we aren't seeing a Reaver rush. I was a bit premature in predicting that. But we are seeing Reavers being used as a very strong pressure tool to make sure that there's no easy way that Langustine can actually build up. That being said, though, North Chilean G and RAR are actually behind when it comes to, to their economy. They're focusing way more on harassment, and they haven't been able to do much beyond that. Like, they've done some damage, they've taken care of a few metal extractors, but they haven't really destroyed anything. If they got rid of the commander, it'd be different. But if you look at the actual economy, Langustine's got a stronger energy economy and a pretty equivalent metal economy without having to risk as much of the map. So it's really going to come down to unit choice for Langustine. And if they pick good unit choice, then they should be okay. I feel like right now, yeah, the use of the the use of the recluses makes sense. The use of the placeholder moderator more or less makes sense. I feel like placeholders aren't are a little, being a little overrated here, but it's not bad. Actually, if the if the Rar's commander gets out of position, then yeah, the placeholder is going to be really useful. That's clearly the main focus of the placeholder. 
But the thing is, against the Recluses, it isn't going to be able to do much good. That's why I'm not entirely certain that it matters all that much. So that's the one thing to me. Like, placeholder is good. May not be super relevant. The moderator, definitely good. Probably more relevant. In either case, there aren't enough units on that line to really make a difference. I mean, there's at least the reckless is making sure that the Reavers can't do much in the south side of the map, allowing for JXG to take the south side of the map. That's, that is useful. And at the same time, over the center, we do have quite a bit more damage coming in here on top of some sides coming in. Unfortunately, not really finding a whole lot of purchase. Not finding a whole lot of value, those sides. They tried. But like I said, the most important thing right now is that this expansion attempt is actually being pretty well defended. The Recluses are doing a good enough job pushing back North Solange's forces. That's giving JXG all the room in the world to expand. Putting Langustine at a 10 per second advantage. And there's the Scuttle trying its best and hitting. Actually getting rid of Rar's commander. That is huge. That could be it. North Solange and Rar were relying entirely on, their, on Rar's commander. There's not a whole lot of follow-up, but still, that is a fairly large opening. North Shalane G is probably going to try to go in for some kind of revenge off that, but it I don't know if that's going to work. I mean, North Shalane G has most of their forces over to the south, and it's just a matter of what they can push, but at the same time, Rar still has all these recklesses and not a whole lot of stuff countering them. Firewalker is being built up, but it's going to be another 10 seconds before that's online. Should be fine. They should be able to last long enough to actually get that thing up. The losing the placeholder is a blow, and I... I don't think they wanted to have. I don't think they can. I don't think they can live without it, honestly. No, I, what am I saying? I said it was overrated before. No, they can live without it. It was overrated only in the sense that it wasn't there for Rar's commander. But it, you know, Rar's commander's dead, so who cares? Placeholder can go and die. Does not matter. What matters is the Firewalker. That's going to help out. That's not a bad move. Moderator's also not a bad move. I kind of wish they'd go for some puppies. Like I really would think just a handful of puppies. Use the whole self-replication thing. Get. A bunch of puppies for basically free, and then rush in and get rid of all the recluses. I think that would work far better than what they're doing right now. I don't think that the way that JXG and Nelzy are handling this is the best way to do it. I think the way they're doing it is not terrible, but I think it could be a lot better. Like, I think... I just think it's just... You know, the fleas aren't doing a bad job. They're pushing back. Good rating. Firewalker's good to have, but... There isn't a whole lot that's actually destroying those recluses. Like, pushing them back, sure, but they're just going to regroup and get a larger force. And then push in with more recluses, just more units in general. Actually, what are we looking at for Q? Fleas, primarily. Ooh, with Iris, though. What do we put on top of the Iris? Rogues, Ronin. Okay, sorry, Ronin and Reaver on the Iris. Yeah, that's. That makes sense. Not to mention, push the Iris over to the south, use that to push all these forces in to get rid of this entire defensive line and the commander without it seeing them coming. I don't think that's going to happen, but that would make a lot of sense to break the bottom line, break JXG's entire economy, and push. But it's pretty clear, given the way the map control is laid out, that what NCG and Rar want to do is take the center of the map, break through here, wipe out Nuzzy's base. There's not a whole lot of resistance there other than the Firewalker, and if the Iris stops things, then it will work out. Now, that will mean the Firewalker can be bypassed. And if that gets destroyed, there's not a whole lot Nuzzy has to defend things. At the same time, though, it does look indeed like the Iris is actually going to the south, and I don't think this is being spotted. No, the fact that the radar dots are going away is probably going to be a hint. But it looks like the focus is going to be entirely on the Firewalker, not going to be on the fact that the radar somehow lost track of all of these units all at once. So from here, this could push in. This could wipe out the entire south side. It kind of has to go now, though. The Gauss turret is going to be a problem regardless. Even now, the combination of units is still going to be a problem. But North Chilean G just needs to push in, and there they go. Seven seconds before the Gauss turret is up. I think... Yeah, the Gauss turret might be a problem if the units focus on that. That's the main issue. Because the units focus on it when it's all packed up, then it's not going to die. So it's not going to help them to do that. The same in the center is being a little bit hard to hold. Oof. And that's a Reaver showing that there is an Iris. The Fleas did spot it beforehand. Iris tr carefully trying to dodge all the Fleas, but there's, well, some way to dodge the Fleas. This is North Shilling, or this is Rar's Flea. So North Shilling G can at least avoid that somewhat. But yeah, 
pushing in on this. The iris has been revealed. The commander's already pulled back. So it's not like NCG and RAR can really take that effectively. And it's also worth noting, Langstein all this time, they have been growing. Like, if we actually look at their economy, you can see that metal use... Or not metal production, metal use. Metal use, definitely in their advantage. Army value is, let's see, 5470 to 3530 in favor of Langustein. I mean, a lot of that being, of course, the fact that jump bots are more expensive than most other factories. So it's more a matter of how they're used, but still, there is a massive economic advantage. If they want to go for an air switch, it's actually not a bad idea. They have the money to do it, and there it is! The push in from the jump bot units. Power is coming in, burning everything up, getting rid of the caretakers, getting rid of some of the other metal extractors, or well, power plants at this point, metal extractors are all dead. Getting rid of basically everything they can find. The Iris Force North. I mean, granted, that's going to help get rid of a lot of the un these units, but that opens up the south side. If, if that gets realized, that if North Challenge G, or rather, Jake G realizes nothing's really down there, we might see a counterattack over the south. We already kind of are. I don't think it's of the realization nothing's there. I don't think that's been clued in on. Why would it be? Nothing's revealed. But it's still a good move. And there goes the Reckless is coming in here and actually managing to get quite a bit of damage despite the Iris and the element of surprise that was had. May not be enough. And of course, the Firewalker just about counters the Iris directly just by setting all the units on fire. So it's pretty clear where the Iris is, roughly, based on what's happening with the radar dots or just happening with visibility. The fact that some of these units are becoming invisible gradually, like, you know, some units get hit, or the Rexes fire, and then it starts slightly missing, and then as a result of slightly missing, it hits another unit, causing it to decloak. So it makes it a lot more obvious where the cloaked units are. So it's actually kind of hard to make this Iris thing work. I mean, the element of surprise was lost three minutes ago, right before the Gauss Torp was up. If it was attacked very quickly, the Iris went straight south, decisively went to the south, destroyed the south. It could have happened, but it didn't. It was waiting, and it waited too long. At this point, Langustine just has a massive economic advantage. They have a fairly large military advantage. They have already been... I mean, they've been winning quite well on everything but attrition. And even attrition is only a thousand metal. That is the reason, though, why it's so close. I mean, it's only a thousand metal difference in terms of army value, but in terms of the actual units available. The Firewalker, the Recluse, just very useful choices for dealing with everything that's been built up. And on top of that, the air switch being done, too... Assuming that's used well, and I don't see any anti-air being built up, there's not a whole lot that's going to be prepared for. At this, like right now, North Chilean G and RAR don't have anything to stop any of these forces coming in. Nothing to stop the Ravens, nothing to stop the Phoenixes, nothing to stop the Firewalkers. And again, the Firewalkers basically counter everything there. Actually, oh, it's not entirely true. They have, they have Phantoms. It's kind of the Jaxxer force to distract the Phantoms. But the Firewalkers coming in here trying to just, I think there's attacking ground. I like that, yeah, just attack ground. Where the iris might be. Try to get rid of it that way. But again, the phantom, it is still a bit of a risk. If they lose the phantom, that could still be a problem. Ooh. I like that, though. I mean, I really like the fact that there are attempts here and there to try to find all these cloaked units. But it's not going to be enough. The phantom is coming in. Will be in range. The firewalker's days are, or seconds are numbered. So the phantom finally gets into range and should be able to... Actually, it's been long since able to take out the firewalker. Why is it not shooting at it? What the heck is that phantom doing? Is it going for command or something? I have no idea what that's going for, but still, it's at least been spotted. Wow, that was close. And at the same time, the commander goes down for North Chilean G, destroying pretty much all their hosts, but that might not be enough. The Firewalker is destroyed by the Irist Reavers. Worked well. Actually, it was really good use of the Iris, despite everything. Iris is, however, down. The phantom did survive, though. So with that, Nagustine is still in a tough spot. They can't really deal with all these forces that easily. Most of their army was destroyed in the process, and the air switch, I mean, it kind of worked, but it was also kind of risky, and I'm not sure if it's totally paid off. In fact, I don't think it has. To be quite honest, I kind of think it hasn't paid off. I mean, again, army value is what it is, and it is 6,000 ahead, but if you look at the air units... Now, 16... Sorry, not 6,000. 1,600. Now, it's 2,000 ahead. But only 400 of that is ground forces. The rest of it's air forces, which... I mean, they're doing something. But they're not doing a huge amount. Although... Ooh, spot the Phantom. Fortunately, can't spot the Phantom and bomb the Phantom unless you're really quick about it. 
But hey, at least the fleas are able to get some damage in there. So that's that's good. The fleas are the way to go as far as getting rid of the phantoms. Just getting rid of that other phantom is proving a problem. And of course, now the razors are up. There's no easy way for these forces to get in. I honestly don't, don't get why this approach was taken the way it was. Especially when you don't have enough to actually take out the razor. Like, what I mean by it, I just don't understand why these bombers aren't being used to get rid of high value targets. Getting rid of caretakers, get rid of mexes. It's like, trying to get rid of phantoms kind of makes sense, but they're cloaked. Use the fleas for that. You're not going to get rid of them with the bombers at all. That is just not happening. I'm sorry, but you are not getting rid of the bombers by using... Or, or the phantoms by using bombers. You are not going to be able to spot them and bomb them. <clears throat> However, the problem here is that Langstein doesn't really have a way of closing out the game. I mean, they have the Ravens, which aren't doing a bad job. They actually, oh, they have... Oh, nice. Buried Missile Silo. I like that. Good choice. So never mind, they actually kind of do have a way of closing out the game. My bad. I was mistaken. They have a way of closing out the game. It looks like a pretty effective way, too. Okay, one Inferno. Okay, yeah, Inferno is a good choice. You just need to burn out the base. Basically, that's all that needs to be done is to make it so that North Shelly and GNR can't really build up their army, can't keep their army up. And I like the Inferno especially because, again, fire! Fire beats cloaking. I, it just causes damage, which means units decloak, and it means that they don't get cloaked. So, yeah, that's a really good idea. I like that. That's what you really need, is to have some way of making sure that your opponents cannot use their assets that they have as invested in. But, again, that's sort of happening the other way around, because there's not a whole lot of ways that Lagosini can really get in, just they have a lot of units that can't get through the defenses. I mean, the Rex is kind of, but not really. The Pyros, no. The Ravens, just getting torn apart by Razors. Able to get some peripheral targets, but not able to hit the main base. And that's the main issue. Still, though, there's the missile silo. It is done. The missile silo is complete. All they need to do is fire off missiles. And then that'll be the missile silo having done its job. Not sure what they're waiting for. Are they going to be firing off one at a time, or are they going to be firing off all at once? Kind of like to see them fire off all at once, just to wipe out a bunch of stuff. I don't totally expect it, though. And indeed, there it is. The first... Inferno is coming in. Where is it firing off to? It's firing off to the main base. Should be able to get rid of a caretaker. Slow down much of the reinforcements. Take up basically everything that's been built up there. So hey, that's something. And there's another one getting rid of all these frontline workers. Or at least pushing them back. It would be bigger if there was a follow-up force. And I really kind of wish there was. I mean, spider bots. They've got hermits. Like, Recluse hermit wouldn't be a bad idea considering what you're up against. I mean, especially with the size... Well, size more dealt with by jacks or redbacks. But, yeah, Reckless Hermit, I think, would actually do the trick to push through all these forces with the Inferno softening everything up. I could see it working. Now, as the character is going down, does slow things a little bit. I mean, SG and RAR didn't have a huge amount of economy, so it wasn't always going to work. But still. Could be an issue. There's another Inferno coming in there. Hitting again where that's Tinger is, where the workers are, where all the weavers are. I like that. So there's a couple Infernos coming in at a time. Really smart play there. Oh, no, sorry. Not, that's not an Inferno. That's an Aos. That is a dead factory thanks to the Aos. All right. That is a, yeah, North Lane and Rar calling in it. Calling it. And the thing is, yeah, the Silo does win. But the Silo only won because Langustine got an economic advantage and held on to it. I I mean, yes, it does close out the game, but it's not winning the game. Winning the game was taking the map. Finishing the game was what the silo did. And it did that well. I actually really like the silo play. You now, good use of Inferno to soften everything up before firing off the Eos, because the Eos only deals 2400 damage. Oh, sorry, 3500 damage. But regardless, not enough to kill a factory that's at full health. But... Throwing in the Inferno softens the factory up a fair bit, and then the Aos is able to destroy it. Is this? Oh, yeah, it's being built up. Yeah, it's good. But yeah, then the Aos gets to destroy it, and when the Aos destroys it, then it's destroyed. Actually, there we go. That is it. North Slane G throws in the towel, and that is game two in favor of Lagostine. So we're going into game three. We'll be getting to that once they pick the map, because this is the thing, of course, is picking the map. 
I mean, this map, we already saw, was very much determined by the bottom left. I mean, it was a smaller map. Kind of thought NCG and Raw would be able to push the center and take it, and I kind of thought they could too. But some really good counterplay from from Langustine, knowing exactly what to do to deal with Raj Commander, dealing with Raj Commander, and after that it was just kind of a matter of, well, they've dealt with Raj Commander. There's not a whole lot of other threats. So once that was taken care of, well, that was it. All it just came down to is holding on to the economy, make sure the bottom, the southwest was held on to by Langustine, and the rest of it was fairly simple. So that, that worked out. Anyway, like I said, we're gonna be moving on to game. We're gonna be moving on to game three, and it looks like Cat Lady Greg's Wig did manage to win their game as well. So as we move on to game three, let's just go over the other results. Cat Lady Green's Quig winning against FSB. And Fat Man Little Boy versus Throwing the Towel bottom corner still going on. And of course, we're on to game three of the winner semifinals on the top end. Wherever that's going to end up being. No clue, honestly. But wherever it ends up, it is going to be pretty neat. Because, I don't know, kind of cool. Like... The, this game so far has actually been quite exciting. So I do expect to see... Well, it's hard to see something. Like, you know, it should be... It should be interesting game three, because again, they got the third map, got to figure out what they can do. Like, how they're going to be dealing with all this. Because there's a lot they have to work out, like... The thing is, this this is still a fairly involved match. I mean, it was close. Both games were pretty close. The, the second one more so than the first one. But the whole series has been pretty close. And that, to me, is the key thing. Is Because the series is close, map choice is going to matter a lot. And we have seen smaller maps do work fairly well for... Really, almost for Langustine more so. So I kind of expected that we are going to see another smaller map, possibly Living Lands or Ice Coffee or something like that. No, no, Ice Coffee. No one plays Ice Coffee. I wouldn't recommend it. Speaking as the person who made that map, I wouldn't recommend it. It was a silly experimental map I messed around with a little while. It's not great. But we are, again, like I said, into the tiebreaker. And it is it's just a matter of map choice. It's all down to map choice. And then once this is done, we'll have the upper bracket finals. Whoever wins this will be up against Endgame Boss, Mana 12, and Sparkles. So this is going to be a tough set of series to come in on. Mana 12 and Sparkles. Whoever loses this goes against Cat Lady and Green Squig to try to hold on to the tournament. But yeah, I feel like Endgame Boss, man, it's going to be tricky. Against, I mean, they're calling themselves Endgame Boss for good reason. Mana 12 and Sparkles are the favorite to win this entire tournament. Absolutely the favorite to win the tournament. I, no doubt about it. They are the ones that, if they are the Endgame Boss, if someone can beat them, that is going to be a huge upset. Which, again, why I kind of think that the most competitive series is probably going to be in the lower bracket. But... We'll find out. I mean, it kind of comes down to what's happening with the other lower bracket match. Throwing the towel versus... Is it? Yeah, the Gregory, Gregory Buzzy Beetle. Oh, and we're going to be on... Oh. I don't know. We're going to be on something. I think JXD don't know what maps to pick. Oh, no, sorry. Rar and No Shilling don't know what maps to pick. I mean, this is kind of how it goes sometimes. Picking a round three map. Like, come on. Kind of I mean, I guess we could possibly throw in stuff. All right, there we go. We're on to Baron. 
Another smaller map. We saw Baron earlier from North Chilean G and Rar and oh no, it wasn't North Chilean G Rar. It was Anarchid and Orphelius. It was throw and towel. So we're gonna be on Baron. We saw the last time this was a very aggressive map that led to a lot of commander based play that did a lot of damage. That was pretty cool. Also really scary, but pretty cool. With this, I expect we're going to be seeing something kind of similar in that we have already Rar and North Chilean G who have shown quite decisively that they really like playing highly aggressively. That is just their way. So I expect we're going to be seeing a lot more of that as we get into this game three. It's final match. And see what happens on Baron because, like I said, this is a, it's a tiny map. Gonna be tricky. But if it works, it'll work really well. So, yeah. That's. I mean, if it works, it'll be. I don't want to say if it works. It's, of course, gonna, Ah! Stop it, Dominic. You're throwing yourself off. Alright, let's try that again. Baron! Gonna be an interesting map. Not sure who it's gonna work best for. Probably gonna work best for. NCG and RAR, to be quite honest, is a smaller map. But, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see if it actually works out for Langustine. They find a way of working around the fact that their opponents are going to be going for Commander Rush and deal with that. Although it looks like, no, RAR and NCG are, they're planning to go for more expansion base play. Might still work out. Might still be the option to go for. So I kind of like that. It makes sense to me. Also, Nuzzy by rank is gold. I guess giant. People asking in chat what what level, what rank is Nuzzy? It's like, I think... I think they're gold. So yeah. Huh. What the heck? But yeah, to me, the question is, of course, what's going to happen with the Calm Rush? Or any kind of Calm Rush style play? Because I'm not super sure that's going to work out. Like, we already see we have, you know, Cloakie and Shield for JT and Nuzzy. North Slane G and Rar. Spiders, North Slane G, not sure what they're going to be going for. But I imagine it will be something probably fairly aggressive. Probably Cloakies. Let's see. So Spider's coming in for RAR. And there's Shieldbots coming in for North Shalane Geo. At the same time, Shieldbots and Cloakies for Langustine. And already already JXD upgrading their commander as RAR is not. RAR, in fact, doesn't seem to be going for a very commander-focused strategy. They have a recon commander, which tells me they're not going to be going in for anything aggressive. Because that's just not how RAR really does things. If they're going to be going for a commander strategy... I think the strike comm is the only real option they have. Or at least the only real option they think they have. Which should be fair. I mean, the strike comm is a really good option for that purpose. But we are seeing already JXG upgraded their commander, pushing forward with it. So I think JXG really wants to go with that commander, really wants to push that hard. Or at least really wants to have that as the front lines and not die to a handful of bandits coming in. Which, speaking of, more so for the purposes of fast expansion to the corners, as mentioned before... But we do have the bandits set up. It doesn't look like another. Is there another conj or another convict being set up? I don't. I don't really see it. Maybe just me. I don't know. It doesn't seem like the convict is readily available. So convict right here. I mean, good to have, but I'm not really sure how effective it's going to be. And otherwise. Expansion coming in here for the commander over with a Venom support. And that's certainly going to be... Venom support is certainly going to be useful against Bandit Glaive. So, yeah, the factors are known. How to counter it's known. North Shalina G and RAR, I'd say, are a fair bit of an advantage right now. Although, to be fair, we do see that JXG has found them. They they know what's going on. That they're... That Langustine has that knowledge means they can set up the counter the commander's up the commander is upgraded should have machine gun there it is so these bandits are not going to be all that effective 
I mean, the bandits are going to try, but the machine is just going to tear them to pieces. Or at the very least, the you know the use of the picket is going to be there to help push them back. So not a free expansion attempt by North Chilean G and RAR, or North by RAR in particular. Like, or rather, North Chilean G in particular. A good attempt. It's a good try, but it's not really doing the job. Same time though, RAR is pushing forward. Does have that commander set up in a reasonably okay spot, so it's not going to be totally hopeless. But still, it does seem like this is more so GHG basically pulling a RAR almost, getting their commander upgraded, pushing forward with it, getting the expansions going. Not quite using it as a frontline assault force, but I feel like this just... I mean, everyone's gone for recon comp, so we're not going to see frontline assault force commanders. All the commanders in this game are going to be used pretty much entirely for rear guard, or, well, for expansion or rear guard support. And that's fine. I mean, we've seen enough commander stuff. We've seen the commander stuff backfire so often that I'm actually surprised we saw as much commander play as we had. But at the same time, this is still a rush. We're still seeing Redback Venom Rush on top of Rogue Outlaw. A little bit risky, but I don't see this commander surviving. I mean, the machine gun's a good choice to have, and it will help a lot. And actually, if it stops the Venom, then maybe. But the question is one of range, and range between the two, like, that's... what? What range is that? Ah, sorry. Range is 285 against 300. Yeah, it's gonna lose the Outlaw, but it might be able to deal enough damage. I mean, the problem, of course, is the damage it takes it means that EMP is a lot more effective against it. But hey, nicely done. Does manage to jump over everything, but it's not going to be enough. That is it. The commander is down. JXG has lost the commander. Langustine has lost basically whatever metal parity they had, as well as a control over the southwest side of the map. Attempts to fix that have come in. I mean, Rogue, Rogue Ronin doing what it can to push back everything. But JXG lost their commander. And at the same time... We've seen North Chilean G and RAR have been expanding all along their entire half of the map. Like their triangular half of the map, it's theirs. And theirs alone. There's just not much that can be done to really stop that. So right now, I don't really see North Chilean G and RAR managing to, managing to lose this. It really is their game to lose right now. It's a small advantage, but on a map this metal poor, on such a famine map as this... Every bit of metal counts, and losing the commander is a huge blow. So, I mean, a revenge commander kill might work, and I would say that Langustine has the forces to do it. It's just a matter of positioning, and, I mean, Rara's not going to let that. This commander is not just going to stay here to die. Like, obviously, that, that'd be silly. So, it's moving back, as it sensibly should. The main problem, of course, is how was Langustine going to be able to expand when their opponents have control over the map? And kind of put themselves everywhere they want. And that's that's really the problem. That's really what it comes down to. Is like, where are they going to go? Where is Langustine going to set up? How are they going to defend themselves? But the most important thing right now is to get what metal they can. And as much as they can. And at the very least, Langustine can set up an assault force. Get rid of some metal extractors if possible. Man, they have at least these pickets up here to try to hold on to the metal extractors over to the north. Which is something. And to be fair, they are taking the southwest. So that assault wasn't free. The commander died, sure, but I mean, it's all it's all there. You know, 920 metal for reclaim. Not uncontested, but still basically under the control of Langustine. Just needs to be taken. They do that and they're basically economic parity. They do that and they have a caretaker that's going to be enough production pe power to just deal with North Chilean GNR. And it's worth noting, North Chilean GNR, they have 25 metal per second currently in their factories, but it's not... Like, I think it's just now. So, yeah, they're in an okay spot. But overall, Langustine isn't doing too badly. Just need to get some reclaim going. Or need to make sure the reclaim stays going. I mean, they have the reclaim going. Just need to maintain the reclaim. <clears throat> While, of course, not losing their army. Because right now the attrition is pretty good overall. Like, it's actually not doing too badly as far as as far as Langustine is concerned, but Langustine is still behind in metal, so they have to make sure they win attrition. I'm not sure I agree with that as being winning attrition. Although I do like the way those rogues are being used to help deal with the bandits. And on top of that, the outlaw is still there, so yeah, no easy way of getting rid of that. The convict's able to retreat. The outlaws won't be able to do too much. The rogues are able to get some nice splash damage going. Rar, or like North Chilean G for some reason is not really, 
not really line moving that much. It's line moving a little bit, but not enough to. Oh, not enough to keep the. No, not line moving. It's alt moving. Formation preserve point move. That's not working. In fact, there's the outlaw coming in there. Those bandits are all dead. The Venom outlaw tearing the entire bandit swarm apart. That means the southwest is completely in control of Langustine. The rogues are going to try to do what they can to push back, but there isn't much they have. In terms of overall firepower, the rogues will not be able to pull this off. At the same time, the center trench is still being heavily contested, mostly with recklesses making sure that nothing can really get in on Langustine's side. But the important thing is Langustine is able to get the reclaim. They're able to get... The metal extractor secured. I really wish they'd actually build at least one metal extractor, but I can kind of see why they aren't. There's only one metal per second. It's not huge. It's there. It's not huge. It's probably not enough to make it worth it. What makes it worth it is the reclaim. And that's exactly what's been secured over the south side of the map. It's exactly what JXG has taken control of. So, what do they got to work with? Well, enough. And North Chang not even able to get not even able to get a snitch up. It looks like the felon took that out. So despite the early loss of a commander, Langustine is still holding on reasonably well. But the thing is, if you look at the numbers, their attrition isn't that high. They're not doing that great. They're doing okay, but not that great. And ultimately, it's going to come down to like one good decisive battle. And granted, getting rid of all the bandits was really useful and really decisive. And that's a lot of reclaim to work with. But the center of the map is starting to fall. The north side of the map is under a fair amount of pressure. The south side of the map... While it was defended quite well, there's still racketeers and rogues coming in and gradual creep of defenses that are not being dealt with. And the racketeer being the most notable because, again, as I mentioned before, status damage is effective against, is super effective against shields. So the felon ends up becoming far less effective as a result of the racketeer being there, despite the fact that no one's been disarmed yet. Just the racketeer hitting the shield ball is still enough to wipe out the shields. But, even then... Oh. Sorry, my bad. It's a third of the damage as status damage is applied directly to the shield. That's what it is. So, the Racketeer is dealing, like, 750... 820-ish damage directly to the shields with its missile. Like, that... That is the power we're... That's the power you're dealing with here. It's essentially nullifying the shields, which means nullifying the felons. And again, the south side taking a lot of pressure, and it feels like the south side is taking a lot of pressure, the middle is taking a lot of pressure, that overall, Langustine doesn't know what to do with the pressure. There's all this pressure all over the map, and I don't know if Langustine is aware of how best to deal with it. Because I'm not even sure how best to deal with it, honestly. Like, this is a lot of pressure around the map. That's exactly what North Sterling G and Noir want to have. I mean, they have the economic advantage. They have the northeast. They're trying to secure the southwest. They have plenty of reclaim they're working with all the time as they're going. Whereas Langustine, they're, they are behind. Having lost their commander is a huge problem. And also, if anyone's trying to write stuff in the... I don't know, maybe people are making map marks. I turned map marks off. I generally disable map marks during tournaments, so... Okay. Other streams might see it, but mine won't. Anyway, back to the game, though. It's, yeah, the Southwest is kind of where Langustine's deciding, just go for it. Just hold on to this. This is what we need. That's everything. And have the slings up in the north just to try to get rid of the stingers, just to try to help tear apart what is there. But four slings isn't really providing enough pressure. At the same time, the recklesses coming in here from RAR are wiping out everything that's been built up by Langustine. While at the same time, over to the south, this Iris-supported approach... On the roach, there it is! Or the snitch, rather, getting rid of half the frontline forces without being destroyed. The outlaws were totally out of position there. Jake, she forced a retreat, having lost half their army, and that should open up the entire southwest side to North Chilean G and RAR. While at the same time, the north side being torn to pieces by fleas and recklesses, the slings can't really do anything. Might be able to get rid of the singer in the meat. No, the singer is going to take too little damage to be actually properly dealt with. Maybe one more shot. It's really tough to say. Like, the slings are definitely trying. The stinger does go down just barely, but it does indeed end up going down. Unfortunately, no follow-up force is coming in from Langustine, and it looks like North Chilean G and RAR are going to be able to completely block out that northern pass. So there's no way that Langustine can even come in there anymore. At the same time, Nuzzi's commander, they're being pushed back again. We saw already 
One commander getting destroyed was disastrous. The second commander being destroyed will probably be game. And there's the commander being heavily, just heavily pressured. The red back almost gets in. The recluse finishes the job. That is Nuzzy's commander down. Langustine, no commanders, hardly any economy. And being completely pressured in the main base, this should be it. I don't easily see any way that there could, anything can pull back. This one red back here is basically finishing the job. Heck, the Reaver can't even get to it in time. It's just that much extra range. This this is basically over. There's one last push here from JXG. Trying to at least... Or let me not push. Just defensive approach from JXG. But this red back doing so much damage. I don't see how anything could go any differently here. Like, Langustine, they're trying. They are really desperately trying. But there's only so much that can be done when you don't have the money. And Langustine never really had an economic advantage. It was kind of always even on the attrition and never really managed to take any of the expansions that were taken out. And yeah, as Nuzzy pointing out, should have pressured Northmore. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. If the North had been pressured, that would have been a much different game. But the North wasn't pressured. The North was actually left to basically to its own devices. Not to mention JC losing the comm was a big blow. But once the once the column was lost, it was still a large army. It could have been done, you know, could have put by pressure, destroyed some metal extractors, gone in the north and helped deal with that. Like, I don't think the comm expansion was the problem. I do think that, I mean, it did die. That wasn't great. But it was worth it. I think that wasn't a mistake. I wouldn't say, like, JXG, you, you made a good call there with the commander. It just could have been a little bit, pulled pull back a little bit sooner, and having been destroyed some revenge could have been taken. And another snitch destroying a huge part of the army. Again, like this... Langustine is trying. They're pushing back, but it's a matter of time. It's a threefold economic lead for NCG and RAR. And that's always how it goes. There's that big of a lead. It's only a matter of time. That's all it is. Like, it's just a matter of how long does it take for your opponent to actually build up enough forces to get through. And... Langustine's not exactly winning on the attrition front. Not to mention, of course, all the snitches that are coming up. And no, those are fleas, but still. Snitches were coming up. Destroying basically everything. The Felon's the only thing... Well, the, actually, not the Felon. The Phantom is the only thing really left. And like I said, assaults on all sides mean there's not even much for that. So, overall, this is pretty much it. My bandits coming in, getting rid of the factory, or heavily damaging the factory. But more importantly, this giant shield ball coming into the front without a whole lot stopping. I mean, the Phantom is doing what it can, but it's only so much. And, okay, yeah, and then on top of that, the Reckless is just surrounding on all sides. There it is. There's the Resign. There's the towel. JXG throwing in the towel, as is Nuzzy. This should be it. At his game... That is NCG and RAR moving on to the winner's finals. Taking it with a very strong economic lead throughout the entire game, thanks to killing that commander, in part. I mean, partly killing the commander, partly the fact that there was really no counter-harassment or counter-raiding from Langustine. Which isn't surprising. I mean, it's like Langustine probably was feeling a little bit nervous. And it's not uncommon that if you're in the lower ranking or rating or whatever, that you're going to think, oh, I can't really push. Because... You think, oh, my opponent's going to just out-defend me or out-micro me. And that, that makes sense. But I feel like in that case, they kind of had to. But they didn't. So that is that. Langustine moves down to the lower brackets. While we'll end up fighting against Cat Lady and Green Squig. While Endgame Boss will go up against North Chilean G. Or rather, North Chilean G and RAR will be fighting the Endgame Boss of Manu 12 and Sparkles in the winner's finals. And that'll be up next. So... Stay tuned. We'll have that after it all gets set up, which could take a little while. So do stay tuned.